really blessed with the weather and it's been an incredible uh, evening. <laughs> so tonight we have some very special guests. For those of you who saw the documentary, Life Animated, you'll understand how the film captivated the world when it was released in 2016, leading to widespread critical acclaim and even Academy Award nomination. The story asks the question, which many of us do. It says, what is the meaning of life and who decides what's meant to live? Owen Susskind's story shows us the infinite ways in which we can find meaning and how we can connect across barriers, no matter how difficult or impossible at times it may seem. We're thrilled to have Ron and Owen with us tonight to share a glimpse into their powerful story. And now I'd like to give a warm welcome to Ron Susskind. Thank you, Robin. Um, I'm going to talk briefly, and then we're going to show you a clip from the movie. Um, I'm seeing a lot of friends in the audience. Uh, all of you in the scientific, uh, medical, healing communities, and the faith communities, this movie was kind of made for you. I didn't realize that at the time, but I'm just telling you now. You know, uh, I was exchanging some emails with Meredith Vieira because she's got a, a bad ankle and she's not coming tonight. But Meredith kind of tracks my journey and the journey of my family in 2008 on the Today Show. She interviewed me about my latest book on the Bush administration. It was a tough interview. And the first day of those books coming out in that era, the sources all ran for cover. All right, then. Now they just look right at the camera and smile and say, fake news, different era. <laughs> I guess it's an innovation, but I'm not sure of that. Then years later, we were all on Meredith's show dancing, my son, my wife, to Disney songs. That was part of the journey. I am a reality-based guy, as many of you are. But over this time, I was taught by my son about the power of imagination and of hope and as well of faith. You know, it's hard to manage the measurements of these things. Doesn't mean they're not there. And it doesn't mean it doesn't shape us. We know this in our hearts. So from this movie, there's all sorts of research at MIT and Harvard about what's called affinities, just a fancy word for our passions and how we use them as pathways, how they change our neurochemistry. We call that pathway as power passion as pathway. You know, my son, at one point, when he was three years old, and we saw doctors who told us this is called autism, they said he will probably never speak. He's probably on his way to an institution. You know, Owen didn't believe that. And eventually, he proved that his belief was well-founded. So the movie, you'll see, is one in which the family, against our will, began to embrace Owen's affinity. Now, folks who are neurodiverse around the world, one out of four people at this point, they find their thing. We're living in an age of miracles, the Gutenberg moment. All knowledge is on an iPhone. That means ever since they're little peanuts, they're starting to nourish as to, this is my thing. I'm not just good at it, I'm an expert. It defines me. It's a map, a mirror, essentially a code breaker, just like art is for all of us but for the neurodiverse even more so. They need to rely on, and rely on what they discover more. That's just part of how they're different. And that's what we found. That's now called affinity therapy, helping autistic people around the world and many who are neurodiverse. And it's driving science. So that's the science part of our show. Now a trailer to Life Animated. In two minutes and 28 seconds, our story. There is a boy who is just like other boys. Until one night, he sees from his window a storm on the horizon. Howie, oh, who are you? I'm Peter Pan, and you come. All of a sudden, at three years old, Owen vanishes. The doctor says, let me explain what autism is. Some of the kids don't ever talk again. 
I remember thinking, I'm just gonna hold you so tight and love you so much that whatever is going on will go away. We're beginning to give up hope. And one day we're watching the Disney animated movies and he says he doesn't want to grow up like Mowgli or Peter Pan. What the hell just happened? And all of a sudden it became clear to us he's using these movies to make sense of the world he actually is living in, our world. So at that point, we began to speak to him in Disney dialogue. When did you and I become such good friends? Whatever works to get to Owen. I've been scared my whole life of growing up. Peter Pan doesn't want to grow up because when you grow up, you lose all your magical and childhood times. My hope is that he is independent enough to be able to grow older on his own. When I look in the mirror, I see a proud autistic man ready to meet a future that is bright and full of wonder. He's gonna have to fall and fail. We're not afraid of that as we used to be. I just can't believe how far Owen has come. The future, I'm still searching for it. Who decides what a meaningful life is? It's like I always say, children, children got, got to, to be free to, to lead their, their own lives. lives. My family. So in this crazy tale, we realized when Owen was seven, he couldn't speak, but he memorized 50 Disney movies, all of them. You were seven. Well, that's when you started going silent. But when you were seven, that's when I realized you'd memorized all those movies, 50 of them. You threw them a line, he'd throw you back the next line. It was amazing. We realized we could communicate in Disney dialogue, which is what we did for years. By day, we seemed like normal people. I mean, you know. I was interviewing presidents. Some of them were not telling me the truth, not ever. I swear, not even once. I do like you, though, I do. <laughs> and at night, we meditated on the emergence of the hero every night. We played characters over several years. Owen Leading starts to not just do the lines, but emote through them. He gets his speech back over four years, learns to read by reading what? We're eating the credits, you got it. What is this? Just tapping intrinsic motivation deep in all of us, the reward circuitry for you neuroscientists. And boom, he emerges into this extraordinary guy. Let me introduce Owen Suskind. No, it's okay, it's okay. We'll do the mic. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll share it. You know, so here's interesting. Owen, oh, so you were doing this amazing thing of matching 50 yeah. movies, scene by scene, yeah. hundreds of hours, yeah. thousands of lyrics, yeah. and dialogue yeah. to your life. Yeah, I know. Okay, yeah, okay, it was really good. <laughs> also, the really great thing about autism is Owen oh, can only tell the truth. Right. Yep, I can. I can. I wish I could say the same from my sources in Washington. Okay, so ready? Now we're gonna do some right now. So what are some of the scenes that you used when you were facing real adversity because you faced a lot? What were some? Hmm. What do you think? What were some? Like Sword in the Stone. It was a Walt, it's a Walt Disney Children's Family animated classic from, from 1963. You know, boy, that love business is a powerful thing. Greater than gravity? Why, yes, boy, I, I'd see it's the greatest force on Earth. Power of love, a big theme of our hero here. Okay, so uh, how about uh, there was one after the bullying. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, what was it? Someone from Mulan? Wasn't that one of your guys? Uh, yeah. The Emperor of China, he says, the flower that blooms in adversity. 
is the most rare and beautiful of all. And but my one of my favorite anime characters is Mushu from that movie. Okay, okay go ahead. We might as well do some Mushu. <laughs> Hey, hey, dragon, dragon, not lizard. I don't do that tug thing. <laughs> the magical, wacky, hilarious dragon. The voice of Eddie Murphy. Who also voiced Donkey and Track. Okay, this is a really cool one. We'll just do a few more of these, and I'll pass it on to the real talent. So when Owen's around 14, uh, he started to think bigger, as kids do at that age, about the future when mom and dad aren't going to be around. And we started watching a scene from The Lion King over and over again, which gave him solace. Again, this is emotional intelligence that folks in the spectrum for years, decades, were assumed not to have at all. But this is the scene he picked, and we watched it as a family. You want to do uh, Simba Mufasa? Yep. Simba, let me tell you something that my father told me. Look at the stars. The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. Really? Yes. So whenever you feel alone, just remember that those kings will always be there to guide you, and so will I. Hold on, hold on one more, one more. So in many discussions we had, Owen said to me and Cornelia, with my perfect memory, much better than anyone in this room, I will always be able to look at the stars and hear your voice, just like you're right here with me. Hmm. So Owen, you want to finish up? I don't know. I mean, you wrote down something here. Okay, so Owen and I were talking a lot about Owen's a real aficionado of the sidekicks. Now, this is like a philosophical position. Now, let me just digress to say, Owen seems like one in a million, all right, up on the movie screen. If we do this right, he'll be one of millions in years to come, because this is the way it is for Spectrum people all over the world. 100 million Spectrum folks in the, in the world now. Okay, so one of Owen's big things is he always had issues as to the choice of the hero. Yeah. It's always the third scene of the Disney movie, the hero's chosen when they sing the I Wish song, right? Yeah. Okay, he's like, who's making that choice? Because Owen always felt the sidekicks were more interesting, which is kind of true, right? Heroes kind of flat, right? Sidekicks have the juice. So Owen became an aficionado of the sidekicks. When he started to see the world, didn't see him as a hero. And he taught us all about the power of the sidekicks. Now, why are the sidekicks so powerful and important? They help the hero fulfill their destiny, and they give wacky, wacky comedy relief. Yeah, both things. <laughs> Without them, what? There is no story. There's no story. That's the way it is in movies and in life. He gave us all sidekick identities in the house. And Owen has taught us all the power of the sidekick, helping others fulfill their destiny. <laughs> you know, so he thought about this, and he says, all these people are kind of, well, they're people who help, right? And so Owen thought um, he, he would want to, <laughs> well, what, what's in your head right now? Uh, you want to, uh, you know, I mean, Owen's got a thousand movies in his head, so let's see what's in your head. Okay. Well, read it. Well, well, that's something you don't read. Jiminy Cricket. Why is Jiminy Cricket important? He's one of my favorite fun-loving sidekicks. Yeah, right, and, and but, but what is it that, that strikes you most about Jiminy Cricket? That all the characters right, all in, in Pinocchio are Italian except for Jiminy Cricket. <laughs> they all end with what? Their names. Uh, a vowels. <laughs> Well, believe in in your dreams. Let me sing it. Okay, what can you sing? When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. Anything your heart desires will come to you. If your heart is in your dreams, no request is too extreme. When you wish upon a star, as dreamers do. 
Okay, here you go. So Owen wrote this down. He wanted to get it just right because his favorite line is 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 not the one most people think. It's um it's if your heart is in your dreams. Yep. No request. Why is that the most important line? And, and this is what you wrote down last night. You see dreams fed by our hearts are not dreams of power or wealth, but dreams of love and kindness, helping and healing. They are, in fact, what I call dreams of the psychic who helps others fulfill their destinies. And in that act fulfills his own, carrying forward a larger purpose than any hero. Those are the dreams that save the world. Thank you all, my fellow psychics. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ron and Owen. It's great to have you here. And hopefully hearing the Susskind story reminds you of the impact that our lives and our stories can have on one another. It's our differences and imperfections that make us special and unique and help us better serve the world. 